I'm just going to briefly show you um, the, the guidance that we've um, produced as part of project four. And this is a bit different to the other projects because it hasn't got funding and it's it's something, um, well, our own test more has, has put together um, in the method support unit. And this was based on work we did for risk of bias two, um, the guidance and the resources we made available. And it's a Word document, it's in draft form, and um, it has um, a bit of information about what Robin's Eye is and the guidance and training that's available. Um, the tools that are available and um, what we did for risk of bias too is considerations for protocol developments we've done that here for robin's eye and also for reporting the full review um, and some examples of different figures uh, and, and formats that can be used because currently um robin's eye um, Revman um, that Cochrane uses to, to produce the reviews isn't set up to incorporate Robin's Eye um, because Robin's Eye is being updated. Um, so I think the hope is that once Robin's Eye is updated, as Michelle said, to include the um, many different um, study designs, um, then Revman will then um, will look at including this. But for now, we have this guidance and we have um, given it to some author teams and editors um, to try and help them think about what they need for Robin's Eye. Um, and we plan to make this available on Task Exchange in the next few weeks for people to have a look at and feedback. As I said, it's in draft format. So, um, you know, any feedback would be great uh, or any tips on, on how we can improve it. Um, and as I said, it's, it's really, it's got these uh, checklists of what to include in the protocol and the full review as well, which, which can be helpful for those of you who have um, looked at our guidance for risk of bias too.